one good pie, take one. And... Action. Action. All right. Hey everyone, I'm Claire. Welcome to my home kitchen. Today, in honor of Thanksgiving, I am making one of the most sort of classic Thanksgiving desserts there is, pumpkin pie. And I am partial to my version of pumpkin pie, which uses caramelized honey and brown butter to really complement and round out the flavors of the filling. It's a delicious recipe and one I hope you try. Pumpkin pie is a style of pie that's a custard pie. So the filling is a mixture of eggs and pumpkin and sugar and usually spices and that kind of thing. Now, I kind of understand why people don't like it because often I think it's not very good. The reason is mostly because there's too much pumpkin and not enough of the other ingredients. I also don't like when pumpkin pie has too few eggs. And to me, it feels like you're eating sweetened pumpkin puree rather than eating a filling that has this lovely set from eggs and dairy, like a custard. So my version of pumpkin pie uses honey, it uses brown sugar, it uses a really nice blend of warm spices and a high proportion of eggs. It sets really beautifully, it tends not to crack. You get like that beautiful finish and it's just, it is your classic pumpkin pie just made like a little special by some particular steps and ingredients. Special equipment. You are going to need pie weights. This is very important. So this is, because it's a custard pie and it's only a single bottom crust, we par bake the crust. So we bake it before the filling goes in. So you need something to weigh it down as you're baking. I just use rice, buy a bag of rice. It's very inexpensive. I don't really bother with pie weights. And I use rice because I fill it all the way. So you got those. You'll need a saucepan. Of course, you'll need a pie plate. I make mine in a very standard nine inch glass pie plate. A rolling pin, and then other than that, just a whisk and a couple bowls and a spatula. It uses a whole can of pumpkin, which I think is really important so you have no leftovers. One can of pumpkin, dark brown sugar, quarter cup of honey, three quarters of a cup heavy cream. The recipe calls for four large eggs. This is a very, very important point. I accidentally bought jumbo eggs, so I'm only using three, but do as the recipe says, use four large eggs, unsalted butter, a recipe of flaky all butter pie dough from dessert person, then my warm spices, allspice, ground clove, cinnamon, ginger, and nutmeg. I have my pie crust here. This is enough for a single crust. I'm unwrapping it. See how it's a little bit gray in color? That is something that happens as it sits in the fridge. It'll kind of oxidize. That's fine, that's normal. But when you see that happening, it's a good time to then think about putting it in the freezer if you're gonna keep it for a little while. So I'm going to roll this out into about a 13 inch round. I'll do my normal kind of thwacking. Insofar as pie dough is a recipe, it's really all about the technique and not so much about the ingredients because there's very few ingredients. So, you know, I do kind of switch up my method sometimes, always trying to find my one ideal method. You're gonna have to wait until the next book to find out what this one is. But I just wanna say, I feel like I've really been nailing it because you want to get just the right hydration where it's, it's easy to roll out and doesn't crack, but it's not so soft that it becomes a little bit tough and gummy. Not cracking, it's really a pleasure to roll out. And you also get the butter kind of flattening into these streaks. So just really feeling good about my pie game lately. So I have this nice evenly rolled out dough. I would say it's about 13 inches across. And I'm gonna wipe off any excess flour. I have my pie plate. I used to do the like rolling onto the rolling pin and then unrolling onto the pie plate, but often I unroll it and it's not centered. So I really just kind of like slide it on. So I've laid it in my pie plate. And what you wanna do is rather than stretching it into that area where the bottom meets the side, you wanna let it slump down and settle into that space. It's just very important that there's contact between the crust and the plate everywhere. It's that contact where there's gonna then be heat transfer in the oven as it bakes, and that will contribute to browning. So I'm using my fingers to press it, I press it into the bottom, and now I'm just pressing all around the sides. Now I'm gonna take a, a pair of kitchen shears. You can use a knife or just a clean pair of scissors. 
I'm gonna cut around the outside rim of the plate, leaving about a half inch of pie dough hanging over. And the next step I'm gonna show you is how to make a reinforced crimped edge. And it's decorative, of course, but it actually serves an important purpose. The crimped edge helps to anchor the pie crust to the plate and keep it like sort of standing tall so that you can fill the pie plate and to help it to not slump as it bakes, which I sort of always get a little bit of slumping. I think that that's normal. I have some scraps, which I'm just gonna set aside. Sometimes I go back and just make sure. It's really hot in here. If your pie crust, my, it's, I still have some work time, like it's cool, if not cold. If your pie crust is getting really soft and hot, stick it in the fridge. And I'm going to take the edge that's hanging over and I'm gonna tuck it underneath itself, just inside the rim of the pie plate. So I'm making this kind of lip right here where they have a double thickness. So I'm reinforcing this little area. So once you've done that, I recommend going once around again and I'm pressing, now I have this nice finished edge and I'm gonna press it back to the very edge of the pie plate. This is just like, really helping the dough to adhere to itself. It's giving me a little more surface area to work with. Okay, so you see it looks really lovely. This is great. Now the final step is to do a crimp. You could take the tines of a fork like I showed you in the cherry pie episode and just press down. The basic idea here is that you're anchoring it to the very edge of the pie plate and you are thinning it out because you wanna increase the surface area because this area where you have a double thickness of pie crust, it's gonna take a long time to cook through. So. That's one of the purposes of the crimp, is to increase the surface area. So you can take, or you can do it with your thumb or your forefinger on one hand and your two fingers on the other hand, and you make this wave pattern. So you wanna go all the way around. I'm using floured fingers, and that's gonna help prevent any sticking. It's particularly important when you're blind baking a crust that you have this strong outside ring of dough to help maintain the structure of your pie crust. But I like to go in with my thumb around each sort of little little divot and make sure it's pressed all the way to the edge of the pie plate. And I'm, I'm on borrowed time here with this pie crust. It's pretty warm, so I'm trying to get this into the freezer as soon as possible. This is gonna go into the freezer. I really want it to be cold before it goes in the oven. So, you know, a 10 minute deep freeze is really helpful. That's going to give us a very defined, beautiful, wavy edge. My pie crust is cold. This is much easier to work with. I have my bag of rice here, a rim baking sheet, because there will be some butter drips and everything. I'm gonna first line my pie plate with foil. And I use two sheets because you need a, like a sturdy layer to be able to support the pie, pie weights when you lift them out. And if you have like one flimsy sheet of foil, it's a horrible feeling to like be worried that you're gonna break the foil and have all the pie weights spill into your crust. One thing I do is I kind of start to train the foil before I put it in the pie plate. So I'll like kind of mold it around the, the outside of the plate. So it's just in the shape that I want it. You don't have to do this. It's just sort of my very particular way of doing things. Then go ahead and place your sheets inside the crust. Now that it's frozen, I'm not worried about messing up the crimp or anything. It's, it's very solid so it can stand up to this. Make sure you work the foil into every little area. You want full con contact between the foil and the crust, just like we wanted that same contact between the crust and the plate. That looks good, and now your pie weights go in. I like rice because I feel like it fits, it fully takes the shape of the vessel, you know, like there's no gaps, and it's heavier than dried beans for its size, so I just think it works really well. So you can see I filled it all the way to the top. In terms of volume, it's about four cups, so about a quart. This is gonna go in my oven. I should say that I preheated it to 425. So we initially bake it really hot, and that's because I want the outer ring of the crust to set and hold its shape. And then we lift out and bake again at a lower temp. So, but this will, at this stage, goes in for about 20 minutes. Often with a pumpkin pie recipe or any kind of custard pie, there's a step where you're warming the dairy. And 
that serves a couple of purposes. Generally, it just helps you to bring up the temperature of the custard so that it bakes faster. If you start with cold custard, it takes it longer for it to reach that temperature at which the eggs will set. So it's useful, but I like to, I think like if you're already gonna go through the trouble of cooking something, you might as well add flavor in the process. So this recipe starts with five tablespoons of butter that I'm gonna brown in this saucepan. It's gonna cook this butter until it browns. It doesn't take very long. So this will go kind of over medium. You wanna sit here and stir it, scraping the bottom, so I'm using a flexible spatula. The butter is browned. I'm gonna show you what it looks like. You can see it has these beautiful golden solids in it. I removed it from the heat just to add the honey because there's a lot of water in honey and it will sputter a little bit. So add the honey off the heat with a quarter cup and like try to use the honey from the bear is fine, you know, the little plastic bear. But if you can, I think it's really nice to use a local honey. The, the quality of honey is really variable and so I just like using a really flavorful local if possible honey. This one is from the Catskills. It's really, really intense, and that's what you want. You want a lot of flavor from it. Just, I wouldn't use like a chestnut honey or a buckwheat honey because those are like crazy bitter and kind of intense. Um, but anything else is great. So this comes back on the heat, actually. I'm going to bring this to a boil, which happens quickly because it's already hot. And I'm going to cook it for a couple of minutes, and I'm going to stop when... I see the mixture has darkened a little bit and I smell a very savory, nutty aroma coming from the honey. Now I'll just take a couple minutes. So this mixture is done. I'm gonna remove it from the heat and slowly add the cream. So I'm gonna bring it over toward you. Um, we had a little bit of a debate about what caramelized honey actually smells like and it's gonna depend on the honey that you're using. I decided that it smells like mushrooms. No one agreed. I think I'm right. I'm gonna slowly add the cream because it's so hot that it will sputter. It's like when you're making caramel and you add the liquid. Don't be alarmed at the pieces in the cream. That's just solid butter fat. That's normal. So just go ahead and stir that together until smooth. People are very averse to seeing chunks of things in their dairy, but don't worry. In this case, it's normal. I just wanna say there's little specks floating in here. That is also normal. That is the brown butter. So that's a good thing you wanna see that. Okay, I'm gonna set that aside. And basically, we are making custard. So I'm gonna start in the bowl with my eggs and sugar. And when we stream in the hot honey cream mixture, that is tempering. So this follows, you know, it's a little bit different, but it follows the basic method for custard making. So I have my eggs. I have three jumbo eggs, that was an accident. I meant to buy large, but I didn't. And as such, I'm only using three because the recipe calls for four large. I think if I were to use honey as the only sweetener in the pie, it would be almost overpowering. So I'm using some dark brown sugar. But first, I'm just gonna whisk these to break them up. And once those are mostly free of streaks, you can add your dark brown sugar. You can use light brown. You could use granulated. I mean, I like the little molassesy touch of brown sugar. So whisk that. So you wanna whisk this until it's slightly lightened in color and, and in texture as well. It'll be kind of foamy. One thing I love about this pie, besides the flavor, is the like intense, beautiful, deep orange color of the filling. It's a really rich color. Okay, now I'm gonna add the pumpkin. I have one full can. It was important to me in this recipe that you use an entire can because like, what are you gonna do with a quarter cup of pumpkin puree? It's a particularly annoying leftover to use up, I find. I'm gonna whisk that, but first I'm gonna add my spices. I'm gonna add two teaspoons of cinnamon. Use any that you prefer. If you love cardamom, use cardamom. If you hate nutmeg, leave it out. It's up to you. If you are like super partial to the pre-mixed pumpkin pie spice, go for it. It's whatever you like. I'm adding one and a half teaspoons of ground ginger. You could add a little fresh if you're feeling kind of fancy. Then a half teaspoon each allspice and nutmeg. 
I actually have like a weird sensitivity to nutmeg. I find it sort of medicinal tasting in a lot of cases, but not in pumpkin pie. I really, really like it in pumpkin pie, sorry. I cannot remember the amount of ground clove. I think it's an eighth of a teaspoon. I'm just gonna guess. Quarter teaspoon. There we go. Quarter teaspoon of ground clove. So whisk that really well. You want all the spices distributed, obviously. And the last step is just to stream in your hot cream, honey, and butter mixture. And we're just adding it slowly because this is just like what you do in custard making. You slowly add the hot dairy to the eggs so that they don't curdle. It's not so hot that you're gonna cook the eggs, but this is just, this is the right way to incorporate it. This is done. This is ready to go into the pie. I will just set it next to the stove and wait for the crust to be done. And actually, it's about time to check it. So I'm gonna pull it out and show you what it looks like. And at this stage, that, this is when we're gonna take the weights out. All right, this looks really good. You can see that the crust has puffed and it's getting golden brown. I am going to carefully, very carefully lift the foil out. Now foil is aluminum. It heats up and cools down like that. So it's not even hot anymore. The, the rice is hot. So I'm gonna be careful to not touch it. And just, I like to, it's another nice thing about aluminum is you can kind of bundle it together and it will hold. Just like that. Now at this stage, occasionally, I'll poke a little hole in it. You can use the tines of a fork, but I want the steam to be, to be able to escape in a couple of spots. Now back into the oven, and I'm turning it down. This is a really important step. I'm turning it down to 325 because if I were to put this into that same really hot oven, the crust is going to shrink, and I don't want it to shrink at this stage. I want it to stay like firmly anchored around the rim of the pie plate and not slump. So a lower temp is best at this stage. So I just turned it down. Now I'm gonna bake until I see golden brown all the way across the bottom. Maybe another 25 minutes. I basically completely bake the crust so that if you were to eat the crust just like, you know, right out of the pie plate, it would taste good, it would be cooked. Um, and then I add the filling and bake it again. So that's just the way I do it. I think it works best. Holy so hot in here, let's turn the AC on and cut. cut. So the crust is golden brown all across the bottom. It's time to pour in the filling. This looks really, really good. You can see that there was like a moderate amount of sh shrinking of the crust, but that's okay. It's still on the lip. So this just gets poured right on top. What I like is that it's not an, a very, very liquid filling so that it's easy to transfer to the oven. Like you're not, you're not as at higher risk of just sloshing it around. I fill up to the very, very top. I mean, I'm not scraping the bowl, but like I'm using essentially all of it. There's maybe a tablespoon left in there. Okay, that looks really good. You can do a little smoothing of the surface. Now carefully transfer this to the oven. Back in, I'm on 325. Do this part carefully. But again, it's not so liquid that it's gonna easily spill. And then because this is a custard pie, the eggs as they cook will puff. So I'm going to bake this until I see the entire surface kind of puffed and even slightly domed. And there will be a slight wobble in the center of the pie. And then it's done. Now, this is the swap that I made last night. I sort of wish that I was cutting the one that I baked today because I think it's better. I had some issues with slumping on the crust here, but the filling baked very evenly. Beautiful, kind of warm, like caramelly brown tone. No cracking, I mean a little bit of cracking around the edge, but I let it cool really gently in the oven and the set is really nice. So I'm excited to cut into a slice show you how well baked the crust is all the way to the very point of the slice. And we're gonna top it with a little soft whipped cream and some grated nutmeg. Make sure when you slice, you're putting the knife right into the center of the pie, pressing down, and then as you pull the knife out, make sure you're really dragging along the bottom so that you cut through the bottom crust. That is a really, 
really nice slice of pumpkin pie, I will say. And let's see if we can look on the bottom. See how brown it is? There is no layer of like pale, wet, soggy pastry on the bottom. It's not necessarily crunchy all the way through, although it is on the bottom. But like, again, I like pie that you can eat like pizza. I can eat this whole slice with my hand if I wanted to. This looks great. I'm really, really happy with this. I have softly whipped cream, which means it holds its shape, but it kind of droops a little bit. That's the texture that I like for pumpkin pie. So I'm gonna put a nice big dollop on. Then this is just like, this is really garnish. You're not adding a ton of flavor, but I think it looks pretty. A little fresh nutmeg on top. I wanna talk about the filling because I said at the top how like, I don't want it to taste like I'm eating sweetened pumpkin puree. I want it to taste like I'm eating a pumpkin flavored custard. So I want that particular texture that you get with cream and eggs, the kind of wiggly, jiggly texture. And that is what I have here. Mm. That bite, like seriously just telegraphed me to Thanksgiving, sitting around the table. And it made me kind of excited for that moment. It's just really, should I eat it like pizza? It's just so tasty. And I think mm, the bottom crust is crunchy though. I feel like I just proved myself wrong in a good way. You can make a pumpkin pie with a crunchy bottom crust. It's not like the spices are punching you in the face or that you're picking out the, oh, the, you know, oh, that's the flavor of caramelized honey. Everything is working in concert. And what I don't like is when pumpkin pie, it's just like the cinnamon kind of just overpowers everything. It's so balanced. It is, you know, it has the essence of pumpkin, but it's so complemented by everything else that's going on. And it's rich, not too rich, cuts beautifully. This is my highly engineered, ideal pumpkin pie. Great for Thanksgiving, although I really don't see any reason why you shouldn't eat this all fall and winter long. So easy to make in the filling. And um, I hope you try for Thanksgiving. Happy holidays. Thank you for watching and like and subscribe. Oh my God, it's so cute. It's like a cat safari. How am I supposed to drive? Move. Oh my God, they just keep coming.